Meguiar's presents Car Crazy, the show that focuses on the people behind the cars. Most kids like to play with cars, but for some, it becomes an obsession. This type of person, and there are millions of us, have an unusual preoccupation with cars. And sometimes it is not at all rational. Indeed, we are talking about people of all ages and all walks of life who are certifiably car crazy. Hi, I'm Barry McGuire, and I've spent my entire life working and associated with people who are crazy about their cars. This show is intended to gain insight into these people and understand why they are so car crazy. It's been called a contagious disease, and we hope this show will help you catch the bug, if you haven't already. Today on McGuire's Car Crazy, we'll sit down with Noel Blank. Noel grew up in a wonderful home with hundreds of colorful characters, voiced by none other than his father, Mel Blank. They shared a special passion for cars together, and Noel tells us all about it. Then we'll go to the Hot Rod and Restoration Trade Show in Indianapolis to catch up with the latest trends in hot rodding and see who Bob Peterson picked to honor with a Lifetime Achievement Award. This is going to be a great show. We'll be right back. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy. Noel Blank is the son of Mel Blank, best known for his cartoon voices, including Bugs Bunny, Sylvester, Tweety, Porky Pig, and Daffy Duck. These are just a handful of the hundreds of voices Mel Blank performed and perfected, and now his son Noel carries on the tradition. Not only did he inherit these fabulous voices from his father, What's up, Barry? <laughs> but his passion for cars as well. Father and son bonded with their own collection that Noel kept for years at his home. These days, Noel still keeps himself busy in the car culture as a judge at the Rodale Drive Concours every Father's Day. He even had a hot rod wedding. We sat down with Noel Blank to find out a little bit more about his passion that he shared with his father, Mel, in the house that Bugs built. What's up, Doc? Hi, well, we, welcome to McGuire's Car Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean to spray you when I'm talking like this, but uh, how are you? <laughs> Doing good, folks. We are at the Peterson Automotive Museum with Daffy, uh, Porky, uh, let's see, Bug. Uh, Spit it out, Barry. Uh, Noel Blank, <laughs> the son of Mel Blank, and uh, a thousand voices and a great heart for cars. Thank you. No, you have been a car guy all of your life. So talk about growing up with the really a car well, guy Mr. McGuire, I want to t t tell you about my t my, my father who talked funny all the time. You know, I said, Dad, what's up, Doc? In the morning, the night, whatever it was. But he was really a car guy. Mel Blanc and cars, that's all that counted. And uh, we would uh, try to go out, find old cars, new cars, whatever it was, and just go look at them. Rarely buy them, because we didn't have the money at that time, to buy a lot of cars. But we'd look at every car whenever a new dealer opened. Whatever dealer it was, a Nash, really? it didn't matter. <laughs> we had a Hudson's. We looked at everything. <laughs> and the searchlights went out there in the 50s, and we'd go, and we'd have such a good time. All the, the, uh, the new car presentations in September every year was when they had all the, the old. We couldn't wait till September. And then Cor Dad would go in you know, and do a few characters, so the guys would show them all around. Here's Bugs Bunny. <laughs> here's Porky. Here's Daffy. And so he'd do his shtick, and they'd show us and take us for test drives. Wow. Uh, I remember once I was in a hot rod. A story that, that he always used to tell. And I had just left their house, and I think I was in my 37. And I had a CB in this 37. You remember when CBs oh, yeah, were big? Oh, yeah, absolutely. This was a 37, it had a CB in it. And I talked to my dad. His, his uh, handle was Bugs Bunny. And mine at that time was Magnum before the, the show started. So I thought Magnum was pretty tough, you know. So that was my handle. So I said, Magnum for Bugs Bunny. And said, this is Bugs Bunny. Now, he's in the Palisades, and I'm in Westwood. And I'm going pretty fast in this 37. I mean, it's moving. Had a little short antenna for the CB. And as I'm going and talking to him, I'm going over the speed limit. And I'm saying, Dad, I got a red light behind me, and he's pulling me over. So he says, crank up the CB volume. I says, what? He says, crank up the CB volume. So the cop pulls me over, walks over to the window and says, you're going a little fast, son, aren't you? And I says, well, <laughs> yes, sir. I, I, I guess I was, sir. I'm going very fast, sir. And then on the CB, I hear my I key the mic, and then 
comes back, nee, what's up, Doc? Hey, Mr. Policeman, this is my son. This is Bugs Bunny. Can you let him go? Just give him one more chance. The policeman starts laughing. He knows who it is. And he didn't give me a ticket. Adrian. But stories like this uh, abound with my dad. I mean, uh, when he used to like a car, he'd see a car going down the road. Um, and he would say, this is the kind of car that I want to get. And I said, well, Dad, you haven't even driven it yet. So he got me a 56 T-Bird, by the way. And he loved that car. But he didn't have one yet. And I went and got it all hopped up. I put progressive linkage right. with three uh, Stromberg 97s yeah. on it, you know. And, so, uh, and the car went pretty good. It did like 94 in the quarter. And my dad kept looking at that car, and I knew he liked that car a lot. So uh, one day, he buys a 57 out of the blue, a white 57 T-Bird. About a month and a half later, I meet my dad on a long stretch of road near the Pacific Palisades. It used to be like a drag race road. And my dad just happens to pull up to me, and I'm going into town. This is about in the summer night, about 7 o'clock. And he goes like this. My dad's going to drag me. I've got mine all, you know, with a, with a progressive linkage and the hot carburation and, and good heads and everything. This he is goes, like uh, Michael and Mario Andretti side by side now. <laughs> my dad goes like this, and I go, come on. Well, I punch it, and he just leaves me cold. Just boom. I found out later that he went to the same speed shop, but he had him install his Paxton supercharger. So he was getting about 40 more horsepower than I was, and he just blew the doors <laughs> off of my T-Bird. He drove that car around for about three years until an Aston Martin DB 2.4 went by him one day, and he followed him all the way to Redondo Beach from the Pacific Palisades just to find out what car went by him. Wow. And then he bought that guy's car, traded in his T-Bird, and drove an Aston Martin DB 2.4. Incredible. So my dad was, was a car guy. Well, he was, and the two of you ended up collecting quite a number of cars together. Oh, yes. Um, we collected, in fact, we had to build a garage in the back of my house to house the cars. And uh, instead of, you know, trying to buy and sell cars and, and keep the collection small, I had to build this great big showroom <laughs> and put all the cars in it and have glass doors. And the, it was sealed so that when uh, the doors were all closed, no dust. You know, it was perfect. You didn't have, I, I wiped the car off a little bit once a month, you know. There was nothing in there. It was a sealed showroom. <laughs> Let's talk for a second away from the cars because you continue all of his voices. And, I mean, you're, you say, so busy doing that. Talk about that part well, of your life. Well, not all the voices. My dad did 1,500 voices. I'm lucky if I can get, you know, six, <laughs> seven, 12. No, he did them all. He originated them. We're all copies, everybody that you hear. And there's a lot of us that copy the voices to do it for different products and things. And... Uh, we try to use his original voice and move it back in because we have it all on DAT yeah, recording. This is fantastic. Talk about that. That's well, so, there were so about 200 toys made, and all of these toys had his voice because we could take what they wanted them to say, move the voice around a little bit, and if it said, yeah, what's cooking, Doc? We could take, yeah, what's up, Doc? In another sentence, what's cooking? And moving, what's cooking, Doc? Moving the words around. So little dolls or watches or talking dinner rolls, whatever it was, was his, uh, you know, was his voice. <laughs> he actually received an Oscar. He received five Oscars. Five, five Oscars. different cartoons received an Oscar, right. I have one of them just sitting in my, uh, t on my table there, and I just love looking at it. It was for a Tweety uh, cartoon. Uh, that It was just a wonderful cartoon. But yeah, there were five different Oscars. You're such an integral part of the fabric of the car guy world in Southern California. There's so many friends <laughs> well, and so many stories, I don't even know where we can begin. Well, but. there's one story that, uh, that I like to tell because my wife, Catherine, she loves cars too. And we had a hot rod wedding. This, this is a great story. And she said, why don't we have the wedding at Warner Brothers? There's a parking lot there, and above the parking lot are these wonderful characters, Bugs, Porky, Daffy, Tweet, the whole bunch, and they're huge. They're four or five stories high. And we had our wedding there with about 50 hot rods. Cat came in in, a, in my uh, chopped Merc, the white one, all beautiful. And I was in a flame, my flame Merc, the chop, <laughs> looking real mean, getting out there. We all wore uh, uh, Letterman sweaters, and we got married in a hot rod wedding. Stay tuned, we'll have more from Noel Blank when McGuire's Car Crazy returns.
Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy with Noel Blank. We go to all these car auctions. One of the great experiences we had at a car auction was at Christie's of Pebble Beach. What was that? I had a four, great, year, four years ago? Yeah, a little longer. Yeah, five, 97. Five, five, not, 97. 97. Yeah, I, I, I decided to get rid of a few cars that I didn't drive a lot that were beautiful and well polished because they were all McGuired <laughs> up. And by the way, That's I, the I would get Bill Larzalier over there and he'd get his kid out and use your stuff and he would really make these cars look gorgeous at this auction. So they were beautiful. And I had a Corvette there, a 57 Corvette. It was beautifully painted, but it was what I call a three-footer. It looked great from three foot. You get closer, it starts to, you know, it doesn't look that great. It's better at 10 feet, but it really sparkled. And before the auction, the people at Christie says, you know, I don't know if we're gonna get the $40,000 that you're gonna look at this car getting. Can you take a little less as long as we get more for some of the other cars? I said, sure. They said, well, can you take like 35, 30? I said, oh, sure, it doesn't matter because it was only a 250 horsepower. It wasn't a 285. And it was, uh, you know, it was a nice Corvette, a nice car. But it was no blanks. <laughs> well, I don't think that this, <laughs> there were two people that were looking at it that kind of liked it a lot the whole few days. But anyway, uh, the auction comes about. Now, I'm outside pouring gas into a Ferrari because it's running out of gas and it's the next thing up on the, on the stand <laughs> so where it's going to be. You weren't even I wasn't paying attention. attention. There are 1,200 people in the tent, and I hear them start to cheer. Now, what are they cheering about? I finished pouring the gas into the Ferrari, and I walk into the you tent. You weren't even in there when that was I wasn't place. happy oh my God. until it got to 80000 And I'm saying, what could be $80,000? Not the Corvette. And I look, it's the Corvette. 80000 Now they're bidding by tens. 90, 100. And I'm looking, who's bidding? 110, 120, 130. And I was like, wait a minute, who's bidding? One guy in the back with a turban on and another guy with a lot of gold jewelry. Okay. It goes back and forth and back and forth. I'm going, this is impossible. Now it's at $180,000. The car reached with the percentage that Christie's tags on at the end of every auction, naturally, $223,400 for a car <laughs> that I thought was going to go for about 35. <laughs> and that's what happens with auction fever. Yeah. There's a beautiful car that somebody really loves. And if money, you have two people. And, yes, if you, you, have, you to have two. two. One have doesn't two. matter. Yeah. <laughs> but if they really love the car, and they really, and, and money's no object, and obviously with these two people, money was no object. They wanted the car. And they simply bid it up to an unusual price. Now, of course, everybody, Corvette Mike calls me, everybody calls me and says, Congratulations. I says, I don't think this is going to raise the standards on Corvettes. I don't think a Fueli 250 Corvette from now on is going to go for $223,500. I think you, no, 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 it no, never no, did. No. But every car, you brought how many cars to uh, that? About no. seven cars. Seven Eight cars, days. every one. They did pretty well. I mean, that was yeah. incredible. Right? I was standing with you at the end, and you were just like, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know what to say. Yeah, I was <laughs> selling toolkits for more than the cars. I mean, it was ridiculous. Everybody wanted part of that garage, you know, part of the stuff that was in it. So I was filling it up with hot rods now. That was, that was a moment in time. Yeah. And move your cars out to the Santa Monica Airport. Move them out to the Santa Monica Airport, <laughs> and now I can drag them up and down the back. Yeah. <laughs> totally catch me. I used to keep a helicopter out the Santa Monica Airport. I got about 2,500 hours in a, in a jet ranger. And I kept my helicopter out at the Santa Monica Airport for one reason. Because when I first got it in the early 80s, I would go all over Barstow, uh, Las Vegas area, all the desert to find these great collections that people would just roll into the desert and park. I found some of the great car collections in the world that were not being taken care of, that dust was blowing over. No. Yeah. And I was always afraid to land because I'd get shot. But so I would find out right where they were. I'd come down low, I'd hover. And I know that they were probably some survivalists out there with all those cars that were going to shoot me if I landed. So, but I'd find out how to get there on the map. And then I'd go out there and find a car. And a lot of them, of course, wouldn't sell. I, I, drove, I flew by one area north of Bakersfield once that was tucked in a mountain that must have had 200 great cars pulled in and left. The most amazing cars you'd ever seen. Great old Caddies and Lincolns and Packards and Fords and Chevys and Dodges and Plymouths and all pulled in one way and not out. And they'd look like they'd been there for 15 or 20 years. Beautiful classics. And I know this man must have been a survivalist because as I came down low in the helicopter, he's like this, you know, I'm looking to see what's he got in his hand, but I could never find the place by automobile. Really? I never find it. It was that 
obscure oh and that weird. Well, you know, we go on for a long time yet. Yeah, you have so many wonderful stories, but time is short. So I just say thank you, No, thank, thank you. you. You're a great friend. Thanks thank for you all very you much. I appreciate it. Just thank you. A lot of fun. And if I turn this way and say to the camera, what's up, Doc? You know what's up, but the 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 that's all, folks. Don't leave now. After this break, we're going to Indianapolis for the Hot Rod and Restoration Trade Show, where my friend Bob Peterson honors our friend Carol Shelby with the Lifetime Achievement Award. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy. The Hot Rod and Restoration Trade Show gives hot rodders the opportunity to check out what's new and hot in the hobby. Last year, a very special tradition was started to kick off the festivities. Show organizer Debbie Lewis explains. The Hot Rod and Restoration Trade Show and Trade Magazine launched two years ago the Robert E. Peterson Lifetime Achievement Award. And Mr. Peterson each year personally determines who should win that award. He legitimized hot rodding, and if it weren't for Mr. Peterson, um, you know, perhaps this market wouldn't be thriving as it is today. So each year that we give this award, it's honoring Mr. Peterson for his contribution, but then also each year he selects someone that he believes has contributed a lot to the growth and the well-being of the hot rod market. We have a breakfast each year, sponsored by McGuire's, <laughs> and Mr. Peterson comes and personally presents the award to the winner. There really hasn't been anything to honor people that have done good things in the hot rod business. And I think that uh, this is a great setting here in Indianapolis with all of the, all of the builders coming together. So I think this is a real, really great spot. This year's honoree has devoted his life to the automobile. He's famous for his racing and he built the quintessential hot rod sports cars of all time, the Shelby Cobra a true American icon. When you've done what you wanted to do all your life and had a lot of fun doing it, they give you the Lifetime Achievement Award and something you never expected, like I never expected the Cobras to amount to very much. And I just look forward to every day and I'm just thankful that I'm here to enjoy something like this, and especially from Bob, who's been my dear, dear friend for so many years. And I never expected to get it. And how can I say thank you to him? As many things as he's done for me with all the magazines, the cars would have never mounted to much without his help. And, and you go just on for 50 years and you just say, how lucky can you get? We caught up with enthusiast and new chairman-elect of SEMA, Corky Coker, who exemplifies the standards and integrity set forth in shows like the Hot Rod and Restoration Trade Show. Coker Tire Company was started in 1958. My father, Harold Coker, is a former national president of the Tire Dealers Association nationally, former national president of the Antique Automobile Club of America. I grew up in old cars. I remember riding in uh, 1910 Rios when I was five years old on Glidden Tours every year. So our company has been involved in supplying tires made in the original molds, so they're really not recreations. They use today's standards, today's technology, today's compounds, but they're actually exactly correct because they're used and the, made in the original molds. So uh, the people that are car crazy or people that are, that are uh, restoring their vintage cars, they can have a high-tech tire and make it look just like it was, so it's exactly correct. 32 Fords are so sought after that it takes a company like Hot Rods and Horsepower to remanufacture these beautiful steel bodies to keep up with the demand of hot rodders everywhere. They're as good or better than the originals. Hot Rods and Horsepower is a company that um, manufactures steel hot rod bodies, replica bodies, particularly right now 32 Ford is our, is our chosen year. Um, we are known more than anything right now for the 32 Ford three window coupe body which is stamped in steel. We have it made in Detroit. When we came last year we walked in here with one one steel body shell and um, nothing else. We literally had that steel body sitting on the floor and uh, the, the, the reception was magnificent. In fact, we sold, I think at this show last year, we sold about 16 of those bodies. Bond Speed's Brad Fanshaw designs products to do what he loves, which is participating in the car culture. We uh, actually look at the automotive industry as a lifestyle. 
and uh, we try and appeal to all different aspects of the automotive industry. And our products uh, range from uh, wristwatches to automotive gauges and forged aluminum wheels and apparel. Uh, the other division of the company is uh, Bond Speed Design, and we do automotive design. Myself and my partner, Michael Anthony, we form this to, uh, to do what we love, which is uh, be part of the uh, car culture and bring uh, what we feel are the best products to the industry. Up next on McGuire's Car Crazy, we'll be back on the show floor at the Hot Rod and Restoration Trade Show to take an extra close look at one really cool ride. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy. A very special guest at the Hot Rod and Restoration Show, personally invited by the show organizer, Debbie Lewis, was Ron Whiteside with the Detroit Autorama winner of the prestigious Riddler Award. We asked Ron to tell us about the car and how he found it. About 38 years ago in Phoenix, Arizona, on the corner of 7th Street and Rose Lane, which is kind of north central Phoenix, there's a gas station and this car was sitting behind the gas station, backed into the corner of the lot so that the grill was facing out. And that's, that's when it first caught my eye. It was, it was under a tree that, was, that had been dropping needles, a tamarass tree that had been dropping needles and was eating what was left of a, of a blue paint job on the car up. And when I noticed the grill and I, and I noticed it was a, I knew it was a suicide door because it was 34, that's when I, uh, that's when I knew that was the car I wanted. And of course my dad, I, to convince my dad that I really needed this car at the age of 15 and a half was, was quite a chore because it was gonna take up the, the garage at home. And of course he figured I'd never, never probably get it running or, or, or completed. You know, it's one of those great car guy stories to hear how Ron's lifetime goal of winning the Riddler Award was actually realized. Once I won the Riddler, I mean, I was just ecstatic. I mean, I'd achieved my goal. I haven't decided exactly when I'll put it on the street, you know? I mean, everything's so fresh and I'm still flying <laughs> from winning that award that uh, I'm just kind of savoring it for right now. If you're certifiable, send us a video of yourself by your car telling us just how car crazy you really are. The best videos become part of a new segment on this show. All entries will become the property of McGuire's Car Crazy. For more details, go to carcrazycentral.com. Well, that's all for now. This is such a treat for me to share some of the great people of my life with you. Hope you've enjoyed as much as we have, and I hope these stories will make you just a little bit more car crazy. Thanks for watching. Car Crazy has been brought to you by the McGuire's family of appearance car care products. Meguiar's, the trusted experts in surface care since 1901.